In this video I want to talk about the introduction to straight line graphs. Now every straight line graph has its own unique equation. If you like you can think of the equation as being the name of the straight line. So an examiner might ask you for example in an exam please can you draw such and such straight line. Now the name that they assign to each straight line is not a name like a name of a person. They will not say to you, for example, draw a straight line Bob or straight line Jane. Because that would be a ridiculous way to go about assigning names to straight lines. Because literally there's an infinite number of different straight lines that you could, ask to, you could be asked to draw in an examination. You cannot possibly learn what each of the straight lines look like by assigning a name like Jane or Bob or Peter or whatever to those straight lines. So what they do is they assign a mathematical name called the equation to each straight line. And this video I'm just going to explore where that equation or that name actually comes from and how it is linked to the actual picture that you're getting. And to do this I'm going to show you with a couple of very simple little pictures in a couple of examples. So if I look at question number one and what I'm going to do in question one is give you a series of points, or I'm going to take a series of points, and I'm going to plot them on a graph. And I'm going to show you that when I plot them, I get a straight line graph. And after that, what I'm going to do is show you how I use those points to obtain the name, or better, the equation of the straight line. Okay, so for example, here is a point, 1, 3. A second point, 2, 4. A third point, 3, 5. And a fourth point, 4, 6. And I'm going to take those four points and plot them on a graph. Okay, very simple. I'm not going to do a big picture, just a very simple diagram. Nought, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then on the y-axis, I'm going to go up in twos. Two, four, and six. So you can, if you want to, change the scale on the y-axis compared to the x. Plotting the points, one, three, one across, three up, something like that. Two, four, two across, four up, like so. Three, five, three across, five up, something like so and 4 across, 6 up, something like so. You then get yourself a straight edge and you join them up. And you should find, because I've designed it to happen like this, that we get a straight line. OK, I'll just do it freehand, but you should be using a ruler, obviously. So something like this is what you're getting. And label it. Y equals. Now, the label we're going to give it is the name of the line. Or, in other words, the equation of the line. So, what is the name of the line? Well, as, as I've already indicated, it's going to start off by saying y equals something. So, how do I actually finish off that name or that equation? Well, this is what we do. What we're going to do is set up a results table. A results table for the one, two, three, four points that I just gave you, which form this straight line when you join them up. The x values are the first of the numbers in each of the coordinates. So the x values are 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the y values are the second numbers, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 3, 4, 5, and 6. And what we do to find this mathematical name, or the equation of each straight line we're talking about, is we look for a pattern which connects the x number and the y number for each point that lies on that line. We look to see, in other words, what do you do to the x number to turn it into the y number? Well, I don't think it's too difficult to spot, if I grab a colour here, that all you need to do is take the 1 and you just simply add 2 to it and you will get the y number 3. If I take the 2 and I add 2 to it, I get the number 4. If you take the 3 and I add 2 to it, you get the number 5. And if I take the 4 and add 2 to it, I get the number 6. So the same pattern is occurring every single time. And 
If this pattern is what we're going to use to get the name of the line, it must work for all the points, for the x and y values for all the points. So what am I actually doing then? Every single time I take the x value, so let's write this down using algebra now. I take the x value and I add 2 to it. And we end up, x value, add 2 to it, we end up with the y value. So we say x add 2 is equal to the y value. And all I now do to finish off this is we don't leave it like that normally. Normally we put the y on the left and the x plus 2 on the right of the equal sign. So <coughs> what I'm saying to you is if x plus 2 is equal to y, then it must be true to say that y is the same as x plus 2. That is a true statement. What I'm not doing, just in case you get confused, is I'm not doing some algebra manipulation here and taking a plus 2 to the other side to make it minus 2. All I'm saying is, if that is equal to that, then it must be true that that is equal to that. That must be a true statement. And so the name or the equation of this line is y equals x plus 2. The y value is equal to the x value plus 2. And any point which obeys that principle, that simple rule, that equation, will actually, if you plot it, lie on this straight line. If any point does not obey that name or that equation or that rule, it will not lie on this straight line. OK, so there's a very straightforward explanation, showing you the points, get the straight line, and I've shown you how the points in a table and the pattern give rise to the name or the equation of the line y equals x plus 2. Let's do a slightly harder one and I'll show you in the same sort of way what the equation of a harder straight line will be. So if I make some space and we'll do number 2 and for number 2 I'll give you four points again. I'm going to say 1 comma 3, 2 comma 7, 3, comma, let me work that out so I know we're going to get a nice answer here, 11, and the last one is going to be 4 and 15. Now if you're thinking ahead, you might be able to spot the pattern that's going on already, but if you can't, let me take you through it. Okay, let's first of all check that if I plot all those points, I do get a straight line. So, I'll very quickly draw my x and y axis, and I'm going to plot 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for the x numbers, and the y numbers go all the way up to 15. So I'll change the scale, 0, I'll go up in 4s, 4, 8, 12, and 16. And I will plot, reasonably accurately, these four points. 1, 3, 1 across, 3 up, is about there. 2, 7, 2 across, 7 up, is about there. 3, 11, 3 across and 11 up, is about there. And then 4, 15, 4 across and 15 up, is about there. You should use a ruler now, and if you do, you would find that joining those points up, you would get this perfect straight line. Now I'm doing it freehand, but you get the idea. Now we need to work out a name or an equation of this straight line. And the name is going to begin y equals. y equals so many x's plus a number at the end. So how do we figure it out from these points? Well, let's create a little results table. x and y values. And I'm going to put the four points into a results table. 1, 3, 1, 3, I can put them in like so, 2, 7, 2 for the x, 7 for the y, 3, 11, 3 for the x, 11 for the y, and 4, 15, 4 for the x, 15 for the y. Having put them in the table, what I now do is look for a pattern, or if you like, in each case, for each point that lies on this line, look what happens to the x to turn it into the y x into y, x into y, x into y, and the same pattern must exist every time. Now, in the last example, we had a 1 and a 3 in the last example, but it was a plus 2 pattern. 
which is fine. 1 plus 2 is 3. But, plus 2 to that, 2 plus 2 does not give 7. So it's not a plus 2 pattern, because it must work for all points on the line. So we look for an alternative. You might say, well, to go from 1 to 3, you multiply by 3. But if you take the 2 and you multiply that by 3, we don't get 7. We get 6. So it's not a multiply by 3 pattern. So what pattern is going on? Well, it's a two-step pattern this time. What you need to be able to spot... Now, if you can't spot this at this moment in time, it doesn't matter. That will be for a future video. I'm just going to tell you what the pattern is. This pattern is a two-step pattern, which sees us timesing the number by 4. 1 times 4 is 4. And then subtracting 1 afterwards. So 1 times 4 is 4. Take away 1 is 3. And if you try this on all the other points in the table, times the 2 by 4, you get 8. Subtract 1, 7. Times by 4, 12. Take 1, 11. Times by 4, 16. Take away 1, 15. It works for all points. So this times by 4, take away 1 pattern that is going on is the basis of what we will now use to form the equation of the line, or the name of the line. So we're saying that all points on this line sees us taking the x value. Now we're going to times that by 4. Well, if you times x by 4, if you times a cat by 4, you get 4 cats. Times an x by 4, you get 4 x's. And then we have to subtract 1, so we say subtract 1. Well, if you do that, you end up with the y value each time for all points that lie on that straight line. So if 4x minus 1 equals y, what we normally do is flip it the other way around. So this means that y must be equal to 4x is minus 1. Once again, I'm not taking minus 1 over to make it plus 1 using basic manipulation of algebra techniques. I'm just making a statement. If that equals that, then it must be true that that equals that. So there we go, there is the equation of the straight line that links all these four points. The name of the line, or the equation, is y equals 4x take away 1. That means all points that lie on the line behave in the way that the y-coordinate is the same as 4 times the x-coordinate take away 1. If you have a point that obeys that equation, or that name, then it will lie on the line. If you have a point with coordinates that do not obey that equation, it will not lie on the line. And that is the basic fundamentals of how the straight line graphs um, are given their straight line equations or names. That's the end of this short video.